Hey guys, thanks for joining me today. If you're new to the channel, you know that we're all about adventures here in the Pacific Northwest. Whether it's fishing in my kayak for rockfish or salmon, or hunting for wild mushrooms in the Oregon Coast Range or in the Cascades of Mount Hood. But today what we wanted to do was step back and do a how-to series on things like how do I decide where to go? What do I need to bring with me? How do I make sure that I'm safe out in the wild? And ultimately, how do I get back? So today what we're gonna focus on is some technology, some free technology that I use that helps me understand where to go, what elevations I'm gonna be in, what type of terrain I'm gonna be in, what's the forest gonna look like, and ultimately shorten the gap between out there looking for mushrooms and finding mushrooms. So let's get into it. I've always cooked. Ever since I was a kid, I've been a cook. And I started buying these wild mushrooms at the farmer's market at $20 a pound, $30 a pound, $40 a pound, $50 a pound, and it just, it just blew my mind how expensive these, these mushrooms were. And then I find out that these mushrooms are prolific in Oregon if you know where to look. So I did what any beginning mushroom hunter did. I bought a couple of books. I started with this one. Then I got this one. And after reading those, I also joined the mushroom club. And I went on a couple of group field trips. We found a few mushrooms here and there. But then I wanted to venture out on my own. And I thought, okay, what am I gonna do? Am I gonna just get in the car, drive out to the woods and hope and pray I'm gonna find some mushrooms? Yeah, that's what I did. And I stayed pretty much close to the roads and, and things like that. But then I wanted to venture out further, but I didn't know what to do. So I started to look online and figure out what technology can I use? Because as I, as I did my research and I listened to to you know, people talking at some of these meetings or I would read something on Facebook and somebody says, oh, I found Porcini's at 3,000 feet in the Eastern Cascades or I found Chanterelle's at 1,500 feet at the Coast Range. And I didn't really know, okay, great. That's, that's great information, but what does that mean to me? So I found a really great piece of software that anybody has access to, Google Earth. Now Google Earth is an awesome application it tells you what the forest looks like. It tells you elevations. There's even some plugins that I'll, I'll put some links to in the end where you can tell where the old, old growth forests are. If you wanna know what trees are 100 years or older, this is Google Earth or 50 years or older because some mushrooms like the old growth stuff. So let's get into Google Earth. So as you can see, I've opened up Google Earth here and I've got the Portland area pulled up. And just look at this little circle here. This is Mount Hood. So if we wanna get into Mount Hood, I can zoom into Mount Hood. And I've got none of the cool features turned on yet on, on Google Earth. But as we look at Google Earth here, and we look at some of the forest here. So one of the cool things about Google Earth itself is if you look here down in the, in the right hand corner, you can see the elevation. So as I move my cursor around, it's gonna tell me what our elevation looks like. So if I wanted to scroll around here and say, okay, where is, 3,000 feet. So I can see that my cursor is now at around 3,000 feet Mount Hood. So if I go in here, I can now start seeing the names of roads. Not only can I see the names of roads, but I can see the forest. I can see the, the thicker forest here. I can see the clear cuts. I can see everything. And I can tell that, okay, if I'm looking for Porcini's, for example, they like some open areas. So these look like some pretty decent areas to go for, but I know that I'm at 3,000 feet. So if I'm on Google Earth and I see, oh, I want 3,000 feet, this looks like a pretty good spot. I can actually go up to Google Earth and get a pin and move that pin and put it right here and say, this is 3,073. So I can put that in here and say 3,073 feet. And now, as I scroll out to my pin here, I can see that this is off of a main highway. And if I zoom in a little bit, I can even see how the heck do I get there? Find out what other areas in there. So if I also want to do, if I'm planning out a route, I'm going to say, okay, I want to start out at 3,000 feet, but maybe I want to go a little higher so I can follow this road and see, okay, now it's going higher, higher up. It's actually going lower, or 2,800 feet. Maybe I want to go to 2,800 feet. Or if I want to go, Let's zoom out a little bit. See some of these other major roads. 
So for example, here's another spot here that I can see the road, I can see the trail, I can see that it starts at 3,100 feet. Hey, yeah, that's okay, this is a spot for 3,100 feet. So let's, let's put this pin over here and say this is 3,141. Okay, and there I go. Oops, missed it. Let's do that again. Let's see, that's our 3141. What's even cooler is I can actually take this pin and I can say, open up Google Maps. So if I want to go to Google Maps and get directions to this particular spot, I can get directions at Google Maps. Pretty cool stuff, right? So let me show you something else that's even cooler with Google Earth. So one of the cool tools about Google Earth is there are some overlays that you can get. They're free overlays. One in particular is put out by the Oregon Wild website, and I'll put a link uh, to the description at the end. Uh, but one of the, what the cool things about this, this overlay is it tells you where the old growth forests are in Oregon. And the old growth forest is designated by either being at least 50 years old or being at least 100 years old. And some mushrooms, morels, um, and uh, chanterelles and things like that either prefer old growth or the younger trees and so forth. But with this overlay, and I'll show you what it looks like. And this particular one is from the Mount Hood area, but if I click on this, all the greens that you see here, and we can scroll in, all of these greens are 100 years old or more, whereas the blues are 50 years old, and everything else is younger. So depending upon the kind of mushroom you're looking for, this is gonna give you an even better look into where are the likely areas. So I can scroll in like everything else and see where these trails are, you know, uh, and see where the mushrooms might be. So if we look at this area here, I've got, you know, if I want to park, let's just say I want to park here, and this is at 3,500 feet, not only do I have access to the 50 year old or older, I also have access to old growth here, I also have some younger stuff as well, and some open areas. So this might be a likely suspect here, it's 3,500 feet, I want to put a pin. Let's move this popper here, and say this is my 3,500 foot spot. There you go. So when we scroll out, we see where this is in relation to everything else. And you can now, you can see that there's are, there are big chunks of the old growth forest. Okay guys, so I wanna show you how to find these interactive old growth maps on, on the web. And they're put out by uh, this company called Oregon Wild. So, here I am on their, on their website, and there's all kinds of really cool things that you can see on their website, all about the Oregon forest. But if you look at this link, and I'll have a link to the to, to the uh, location of these maps uh, later in the video. But as you look at this particular website, you can see we've got the Mount Hood National Forest Interactive Map and the Sayus Law uh, National Forest Map. And so you can click on these, and then when you go into Google Earth, you actually can import uh, these overlays. There's directions on these uh, on these downloads on exactly how to pull those into Google Earth. And then you could turn them on or turn them off. So if you want to look at the terrain, you can look at the terrain. If you want to overlay the uh, old growth maps on top of there, uh, you can do that after that uh, and see them and see it both ways. But for me, they've been invaluable to really understand. First of all, where are these big trees? Where are the old trees? Uh, where are the open areas? And so as I start planning out my routes and understand where I wanna go, the areas that I wanna see, where do I wanna park? How am I gonna get back? I actually have a whole folder full of printouts of uh, the old growth forests, locations on Mount Hood, locations at the coast, locations in Central Oregon. And this way I can flip through if I'm out in the field and really see what's around me without having to worry about whether I've got cell phone coverage, whether I've got GPS coverage, and so forth. So the great thing is, you know, it's a free resource. You can use it. Hopefully it's, it's helpful for you guys out in the field. 
if, if, it, uh, if it helps you, you know, leave a comment at the bottom. Let me know what you think. If you run into trouble, if you got any other great ideas or tips from Google Earth or any other tools that, that you guys use, uh, you know, let me know. You know, I'd love to hear about it and, uh, and, and do a video on how to help, uh, help others. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. It's my first uh, how-to video um, for mushroom hunting. Uh, the next videos are going to be around what equipment I take out with me out in the forest. How do I stay safe? I'm also going to do a, a video on the GPS that I use and the satellite locator that I use in case I get stuck and get hurt and can't get out of the forest. So all these things to make sure that, that I do come home um, safe and sound and I go on more adventures. So thanks again for joining me. I look forward to catching you in the next video. Thanks.